morning, as well as to everyone joining us by video and podcast. We want our visitors and guests to know that we practice open communion. We invite all baptized persons to receive the Lord's Supper with us today. Our next fellowship dinner is coming up this Wednesday, the 14th at 6.30 p.m. at Buckeye Jakes in West Allen. Please feel free to sign up on the bulletin board in the fellowship hall so we know how many to reserve for. Our ice cream social is rapidly approaching. Please feel free to invite your friends and neighbors to join us in two weeks on the 25th after worship for fun and fellowship. We will be, fi- we will be having a finalizing meeting after worship next week, the 18th, to go over any remaining details. Also, we will be setting up on Saturday the 24th at 1 p.m. Anyone who is available is welcome to help set up. Rally Sunday and Youth Sunday are both coming up September 8th. Please let me know if you would be avail- available to participate in the service that day so I can begin assigning parts. Once again, we will be having a booth at the Pretzel Festival this year, and once again, we are in need of people to donate water and help staff our booth. The Pretzel Festival will be September 28th and 29th. Please feel free to sign up on the sheet on the back table if you would be willing to help out. Also, a reminder to our youth that this counts towards your honor award. The other announcements I leave to your own reading. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Karen. Um, God has blessed me with an abundant harvest of tomatoes, and so there's a basket of them back on that table. Feel free to take them, and please take them all, because I have that many plus more at home. So. <laughs> you have me tomatoes. Thank you, Karen. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Let us begin with prayer. O oh Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen. <laughs>
thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scriptures tell us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who gives faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
first reading is found in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 3 through 8, page 559 in your view Bible. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the desert, he came to a broom tree. He sat down under it and he prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached or the mountain of God. Here is the first reading. The second reading is found in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to chapter 5, verse 2, page 1822 in the Bible. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here in the reading. It is written in the promise. 
they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from Him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only He has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. For dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to start off today by making yet another public service announcement. And this is especially here for all of our children and youth who are going to be starting up school again in about a week or so, but really applies to, to us all ages as well. And that is something very simple. Eat breakfast. Now, this is this probably is something which we may take for granted. But especially, think about this. What happens if you skip if you skip breakfast in the morning? How do you usually feel in the morning? You usually feel kind of sluggish, yes. <clears throat> sluggish and of course incredibly hungry. But what that means is once you eat lunch, then you really feel sleepy right after lunch. So you need to have breakfast in the morning in order to keep going throughout the day. You also need breakfast in the morning just be able to feel good mentally throughout the day as well. So again, I encourage every single one of you, and especially all of you students here, make sure you eat breakfast first thing in the morning. Now, of course, for all of you watching as well, we are also, we are also like most fully aware that there are many, that there are many people, especially many children, whose families cannot afford breakfast. And so, I also encourage, if your school offers free or reduced breakfast, please feel free to take advantage of it as well. Also, if you or you know of anybody, whether, whether a neighbor or a friend, who is short on food and, um, and, lacks, and lacks a proper food for breakfast, please also feel free to be able to reach out and see how you can help them by donating in some way. Because it is, it is Pardon me, because it is very important for us to make sure that we are properly nourished. If we are properly nourished, then we are able to make it throughout the day and, really, throughout the whole week. And indeed, in today's scripture readings, that is what God is telling us as well. That we have to feed on Him and feed on what He gives us to be able to be nourished and sustained. Because another thing as well, and especially in my own experience, is that if we skip breakfast in the morning, we, we may tend to feel anxious, definitely in the morning and throughout the rest of the day as well. This is this was definitely the case with this was definitely the case with Elijah, who we read about in today's in, in today's first reading, which Becky read for us just a few moments ago, where Elijah, where Elijah was afraid because he had just beaten the prophets of Baal in a spiritual battle, where the one true God of Israel was shown to be, what was that? The one true God. So Elijah was fearful for his life. He was anxious. He was afraid. He was worried about what was going to happen to him, and he was just plain tired of fighting. How many of us have ever been in that position, where it seems like we have just gone through a major struggle, or we have to go through struggle after struggle after struggle, problem after problem after problem, crisis after crisis after crisis, and we just say, God, please make it stop. If you're not going to make it stop, then please just end my life. Probably there have been, there have been, there doubtless have been people who have said just that. I can't keep going. I don't want to go on anymore. And yet, it is just at those moments when God reaches out to us and does something to keep us going, to encourage us, to keep us sustained,
to let us know that He is with us, that we are not fighting the battle alone, that He is right by our side fighting our battle for us. Our victory has already been guaranteed, and He is there to give us something to let us know we can keep going. That's exactly what He does for Elijah. He provides bread and water for Elijah to be able to eat, to be able to eat, to be able to keep on going, especially to keep on going with the work that God has called him to. It's amazing, isn't it, how much better everything looks and feels after a good meal. Once again, I myself can speak from personal experience here, that everything can look bleak and totally hopeless. <coughs> Everything can look impossible to overcome. Everything can look really sad and really down. And you can feel really defeated. But then, you just have a bite of food, and what happens? Everything seems a lot better. And, once you have, once you have a good meal, you're able to see everything in perspective. And see how much better everything really is. And that was definitely the case for Elijah. Once he was able to have that food that God gave him, he was strengthened. He was able to see that God was going to be victorious over King Ahab and, and the prophets of Baal once again. He was able to see that God was going to be victorious over Queen Jezebel. And he really was able to see things in a much better perspective. So not just if we have earthly food, but if we feed on the power of God, if we feed on what God gives us, His very power to keep us sustained, we really can see everything for how it really is. And how is it really? God is in charge. God is in control. God is the one who wins victory for us and who will always come through for us. This is really the positivity that God wants us to feed on. Because he wants us to be hopeful about what we about what about what we are facing. We can say that God really does want to refresh us. God gives us these moments of refreshing. God gives us these moments of positivity to keep us going because he doesn't want us to give up. He doesn't want us to say, I can't go on. He wants us to know that he is with us so that we can keep going. And so he wants us to be able to recognize that with him, there is a better way. And the question really is, especially as we hear, as we hear in our second reading, what are we feeding on? What are we eating? <clears throat> what, are we, what are we giving ourselves for spiritual meals on a regular basis? If we are, if we are feeding and, and letting ourselves be filled with bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, and every form of malice, then of course we are going to not only see everything negatively, but we are going to act negatively towards ourselves and other people, which, I will put bluntly, is not what God wants for us. God does not want us to act or think in malice towards other people. He does not want us to be bitter, to express rage and anger, and certainly to engage in brawling and slander. But if this is what we are feeding on, then this is what we will express. Just as we can choose to eat certain kinds of food which can either nourish us or not nourish us, which can be good for us, or harmful. And if we continue eating foods that are harmful, that's going to do damage to our bodies in the long run. In the same way, if we continue feeding on these negative things, that's going to do damage to our souls in the long run. And since we are to express and we are to illustrate how God really is, then we are to feed instead on what, is, on what is truly nourishing for our souls, and that is kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. We are to forgive each other just as in Christ, God forgave us. 
And most of all, we are to be imitators of God as dearly beloved children. Just as we children, whatever age we may be, either imitate our parents or continue to imitate our parents, God also wants us to imitate Him. And the way to do that is by feeding ourselves on, on what He gives us to nourish us. Most of all, what He gives us to nourish us is the body and blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. His very true body, His power, His divine power, which He gives us to both strengthen our faith and trust in Him, especially during times of trouble, and also our ability to be imitators of Him. Jesus' body and blood, eating and drinking Jesus' body and blood, also reminds us of the victory Jesus won when He died on the cross and He rose again, vanquishing all His enemies and our enemies, especially our enemies which would try to drag us down and say, there is no hope, God is not with you, you are having to fight this battle alone. Jesus has conquered those enemies of hopelessness, and when we eat and drink his body and blood, we are reminded of his victory, and we are given hope again. Also, it is important for us to remember that at Jesus' table, all are welcome. If you are baptized, you are a Christian. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a Christian. If you believe that Jesus is your God, you are a Christian, and therefore, you are welcome to the Lord's table. At the Lord's table, there are no distinctions. There are no gatekeepers. There is nobody to say, you, can, you can't be here. But Jesus himself says, whoever you are, if you believe and trust in me, then you are welcome. And so, the invitation stands. If you want to be on the power of Jesus, if there is something that you are having to face, that you are having to, that you cannot overcome on your own, if there is a battle that you are fighting, if there is something that is dragging you down and causing you to feel hopeless, then come for a pick-me-up. The pick-me-up being the true body and blood of Jesus. You are invited. You are welcome. Come for all this. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear God, we ask you to continue to guide our young minds. Please continue to watch over our children as they begin another year in school and another year in life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, harvest time is coming soon. Please continue to bless the farmers once again with a safe and bountiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Dear Lord, we thank you for our everyday blessings and guidance. Please keep watch over us and help us to continue to serve you in new ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we ask you for your healing power for those who are sick, battling illness, and those who can't be with us today. We name them at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we also look at those who are recently in the path of hurricane death. We pray for all those affected by the destruction, and pray that you would be with all those who continue to suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the offering. If you wish to let our visitors and guests know that you are under no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. Thank you.
stand for our post communion liturgy. Now in the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen us all and keep us in his grace. Amen. Shine on you. 